Well, hello. Thanks for coming back to check out another video. So, we are here today to sit down and do a video that I've done quite a few times on my channel, but we're going to go over my favorite and my least favorite shade within a palette, focusing in on one brand. So, I thought it would be really fun today to focus in on Glam Light. I do have six eyeshadow palettes from Glam Light. So before we get into all six of these, I do just want to say that I will leave linked down in my description box all the previous iterations of this video that I have done, uh, you know, previously. That way, in case you guys really enjoy this style of content, you can most certainly check it out. But I will leave chapters for you so that you can skip around. We'll do swatch clips, everything like that. I have the wine palette as well as the dirty martini palette from their happy hour collection. Then I also have the Frosted Flakes palette from them. I have both the Michaela palettes, the one and the two. And then the last one is the Cake palette. So hopefully that all sounds interesting to you guys and I cannot wait to sit down and tell you what my favorite and least favorite shade is from every palette. All right, so let's kick it off with these larger eyeshadow palettes first. So the first one we will do is the Glam Light Cake palette. I really don't have to say Glam Light every time, do I? Because they're all Glam Light. But either way, this is the Cake palette. So this is just a really nice, well-rounded rainbow palette. I do feel like you get every color of the rainbow represented within this palette in both matte and shimmers, minus the green. There is only one green shadow, and it is a matte. All the other colors tend to have a shimmer and a matte you know, within uh, that color. So my least favorite color within this palette, and I feel like a lot of rainbow palettes do this, is they'll include like a neutral color. Like I guess they think that we need that, but I don't really feel like the neutrals go within rainbow palettes. So within this palette, my least favorite shade would have to be this chocolate shade. It is just a really dark, you know, kind of plummy brown shade. I really do like this, and I do get a lot of use out of shadows like this within my collection, but not within this palette. I just feel like these, yeah, these neutral colors just kind of throw it off. I don't feel like this really helps in any way. I would have preferred just to stick with the rainbow theme. All right, so then jumping over to what is my favorite shade within this palette, I'm gonna have to give it to Guava right here. Now hopefully, maybe it translates pretty well on camera, but this is just one of those like rose gold pinky shadows. I just absolutely love these types of shadows as my all over lid shade. I just feel like they go with everything. Any color that you could think to pair them with, it's going to play nicely, like purples, blues, reds, but even some of the colors that you wouldn't think of. Like I really have enjoyed pairing these rosy, pinky, uh, rose gold shades with like greens and oranges and even, you know, browns, which I guess browns you would think they would go with. But you get my point. I just feel like this is a workhorse type of color and I really appreciate it within this palette and it is a beautiful formula. All right, so let's talk about the first Michaela palette that came out. So if I open this one up for you guys, this is really pretty on the inside. You do have like two rows of neutrals minus these last two shades. I feel like they really aren't on the neutral side of things. Maybe this last one because it's more of like a coffee brown shimmer. I think it's even called coffee or cookie. It's called cookie um, either way. But this shade right here, I wouldn't really classify this as a straight up neutral. So anyway, two rows of neutrals basically, and then a lot of really pretty colorful eyeshadows. So as far as this palette goes, I'm pretty sure you can guess what one of my least favorite shadows would be. It's no surprise. I'm going to pick this shadow What's Poppin' up here simply because it is one of those brassy gold type shadows that I just don't like. I feel like they don't play well with my skin tone, like with my undertone or my hair or anything like that. I really appreciate like golds and things like that on other people when they wear them. And I'm always so envious because it really does look pretty like a nice gold paired with like purple or green or brown. Like I'm all here for it. I just don't feel like they play super nicely with my skin. So when a palette does have those types of gold shadows, they really go underutilized within my collection. So I feel like it's safe to tell you that yes, What's Poppin' is my least favorite shadow from within here. Now, I could have also went with Accent here because it is on that golden family, but I feel like Accent doesn't have as much of like a brassiness to it as What's Poppin'. So that's why I went with the one that I did go with. Now, for my favorite shadow from within this palette, there are so many pretty colors to choose from, and my eye is always drawn to like a bunch of different things within here, but there is one shadow in particular. It might be a little uneventful, but it is a shadow that every time I open up this palette, I really want to play with and put on my eyes, and I've used it multiple times, so I have to give it to Manifest here as my most favorite shadow within the Michaela palette. It is on the 
purple side of things, but it's kind of like a gray taupey purple. And I just absolutely love these types of shades. Again, much like the guava shade from the cake palette being our favorite. I feel like these types of purples just go so well with so many different things. And it's so easy to incorporate. It's so easy to use in looks. And I do appreciate that within this particular manifest shade, there is like a little bit of like pink and silverness to it. So it just makes it something a little bit extra and a little bit extra fun to play with. All right, so Michaela Pat too. I can't, I can't do a Boston accent. But either way, opening this one up, again, really pretty. I think Michaela did such a good job, like curating these palettes, even though they're on the bigger side. I think she did a good job with color stories, and I appreciate that they're different from each other. Like I know you've got purples and blues within the part one palette, but I feel like the shades that she picked to go in here are like an expanded version of that. So either way, I really do enjoy this, but you guys know, again, looking at this, you can probably guess, I'm gonna go as my least favorite shadow is Gold AF because it is the most brassy, bronzy gold shade within this palette. Now, there are these two golden shades beside it. We've got Glitter and 112021. Both of these I can actually get away with and really do enjoy because they're more on that champagne kind of golden side. And I feel like that's light enough to where it doesn't totally look like I'm sickly when I put it on. But yeah, this gold AF, just not a shadow that I'm probably ever going to use. I just know that I don't like them, but here we are. So my favorite shadow should probably come as no surprise. You've got so many pretty shimmers in here and pretty mattes as well, but I am a shimmer girl at heart and we all know that I'm a green girl at heart. So I have to give it to dreams here. It is just such a unique and interesting green shadow within my like collection. And I feel like it's green, but it also has like kind of blueness to it and a little bit of gold to it. And I know I just got done saying I don't really like the gold, but it works within the shadow. Like it almost makes it kind of not like a lime green, but it's like a mix between a lime green and a dirty green. And I really can't describe it. It's just, I'm always so intrigued by this particular shadow and I really do enjoy wearing it on my lids. So I felt like that was safe bet to list that as my favorite eyeshadow. Also, I just really love taking these palettes out and shaking them. Like, that's just fun. All right, so the next palette we will talk about my favorite and least favorite shades from will be the Frosted Flakes palette. I have to say, I absolutely love blue and orange eyeshadow together. I think that is such an underrated color combination. So I am so creatively inspired every time that I pull out this palette. Now, if you are familiar with this palette, you can probably guess what my least favorite shadow from here will be. I'm gonna give it to Tiger Stripes, which is the black shadow down here. Now, typically when I do these kinds of videos, I try not to pick the black eyeshadow, not because, I, I mean, I don't get a lot of use out of black eyeshadows, but I feel like a lot of palettes do have a black eyeshadow, so it's kind of the cop-out answer, and I want these to be a little bit more challenging, like when I sit down and try to decide what my least favorite and favorite shades are, but I do really have to give it to the black shadow in here as being my least favorite. So it is a black shadow that has glitters in it. They're blue glitters. And I just don't like that. Like with this one, the blue glitters do fade away. And so I really don't understand the point of these types of shadows. Now I feel like forever and a day ago in the comment section of another video, I did have someone tell me that the reason brands put glitters in these darker shadows is to help them blend out better. And that's fine. I can get behind that. I could understand that. However, Glam Light has a great black eyeshadow formula. They came out with it in the Michaela palette. So I just don't understand like, and, and a lot of their darker colors too are really nice and they, they do blend out easily and you can work with them easily. So I don't think that they're a brand that has a problem with a black eyeshadow. You know what I mean? So either way, let's move on to my favorite shadow within here. And again, I really love blues and I'm such a sucker for blues, but there's one shadow in particular that every time I open up this eyeshadow palette, I have to, have to, have to use that shadow. And it is Tiger Paw right here, which is kind of surprising. I'm not really an orangey kind of eyeshadow girl either, but I'm starting to play around with them more. And when I say I'm not really an orangey eyeshadow kind of girl, I don't mean matte shadows, I really like orange mattes, I mean orange shimmer shades, and that's what Tiger Paw is. But it is this great orangey shade that has like a lot of goldness to it, and dare I say almost a little bit of like pinkness, so it gives it some peachiness. It is just like the sunset on fire type of eyeshadow, and I just absolutely love it, and I think that it pairs so nicely with some of these darker blues down here and gives like such a fun like pop of contrast, so really do enjoy that shadow. 
All right, so let's do the Glam Light Dirty Martini palette. This was from their Happy Hour collection. So this is the more monochromatic green palette that came out within that collection. They had this, they had the wine palette, which we will do next. They had a very neutral palette. That was the chocolate martini, if I'm not mistaken. And then they had a very colorful, almost rainbow-esque palette, which was the um, margarita palette. So I only picked up two of them, but either way, we're not here to talk about the collection as a whole. You just want to know my favorite and my least favorite shade. So I really like that this is a more monochromatic green palette, like I said, but you do have some really fun pops of colors in here that play really nicely with the greens as a whole. However, I cannot get behind this gin shade. It is a like more blue than green shimmer. And I have shades like this in other palettes from other brands and things like that. And I feel like these more teal shades will say, when you do pair them with greens, they pull more green. But if you pair them with blues, they pull more blue. But that is not the case with this gin shade. Even pairing it with some of these really nice dark green mattes within this palette, it still pulls very teal-like. And I just don't like it. I don't really think that it goes well with this palette. I get like the matte blue down here and even this like lighter, I'm not going to say a pastel, like a grungy light blue. Those work so beautifully within the palette as a whole. But yeah, this gin shade just being like a teal, like a, like a poolside kind of blue. I just don't like it. So my favorite shadow in this palette is has to be on the rocks. It is just one of those super pretty, like interesting, unique shades. It has like a lot of like not necessarily different shiftiness to it, but it does have some like silver and gold little sparkles in there that give it just something extra. I absolutely love wearing this on my eyes. It is a beautiful inner corner highlight. It's a beautiful lid shade. It's a beautiful shade if you want to do like a two-tone shimmer lid look, um, pairing it with any of these other shimmer shadows within here. It's just so beautiful and so nice. All right, so the last Glam Light palette to talk about is the Wine palette. Now, in case you were curious, this is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyelids today. And who is Haley? She's wearing an all-matte look. I don't know, but either way, I have absolutely fallen in love with this Wine palette. I was really on the fence about getting it. I knew I really wanted the Dirty Martini palette from this collection, so I ordered that one first. And after I was using it and like really enjoying it like it's the same great glam light formula I just decided to bite the bullet and really expand my purple shadow collection by adding this into my life and I'm quite happy that I did I absolutely love this palette I feel like this and the probably the frosted flakes are two of my most used glam light palettes so let's get into this one now again if you've been here for any length amount of time you know by looking at this beautiful purple palette what shadow I'm going to pick is my least favorite shade. It's this golden shade down here, Chardonnay. Now, I do have to say, unlike the gin shade that I just don't get adding into the Dirty Martini palette, I can understand why you would put this golden shade in here. It does really play nicely with the variety of purples that you get within this palette. However, broken record, it's just a brassy gold and I don't like it. I don't really feel like it looks good on me. So obviously I'm going to pick that as my least favorite shade. Now, as far as favorite eyeshadows go, there's so many pretty shades in here and there's especially some really pretty shimmer shades that are on like the blue purple side, on the purple side. But again, I have to go with an unassuming color that I just really get a lot of enjoyment out of and it is a shadow that I use almost every time that I reach into this palette. So I'm gonna give it to Merlot down here. I absolutely love berries, you guys know that. And I guess I would classify this as a berry, but it's almost like a more burgundy berry, we will say. And I feel like compared to my other berry burgundy type shadows that I have within my collection, this Merlot shade is on the more cooler tone side compared to the other ones which pull more warmer. And I really do, I enjoy both. Don't get me wrong, like a warm tone berry and a cool tone berry, but there's just something about this one being cool toned. I think because I have a neutral undertone, I just feel like it looks so lovely and I absolutely love wearing it. I am not a one shadow type of look person, but I feel like if you just let me put Merlot packet onto my lid and then blend it out into my crease, like I would be a happy girl. So that is it. That is my last Glam Light palette to talk to you guys about. In the comments down below if you have any glam light palettes and would like to share your favorite and least favorite shade i would be more than happy to find that out and we can have a discussion but other than that i thank you so much for sticking around and making it to the end hope you're having a good day a good night or a good whatever and i will catch you 
in the next one. Bye.